Jeremiah chapter 1, it, it came to pass in the fourth verse, it says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Joshua stands here before you tonight at 14 years old. Jesus was teaching in the temple at 12 years old. Amen. Amen. So I, I know that God has got something for this young man. It goes on to say that, you know, I cannot speak for I'm a child. But the Lord said unto me, say not I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Amen. Be not afraid of their faces. Be not afraid of their faces. Amen. Everybody smile at him. Amen. Show them pearly whites off to him. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Amen. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Amen. Verse 10 says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down the build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord uh, came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, uh, what do they see? He goes on to talk about the rod and the almond tree. But I, I want to say this tonight, that I believe, I, as I threw my arm around him Sunday and I said, are you ready for this? He said, no. I said, you got the word yet? No. But the word was always there, amen? It was just God releasing it to him and knowing. I know that his mother, his dad's here tonight. They're proud. Grandparents are here. Um, you know, friends and family are here. Uh, I'm sure, Lily, smile at your brother. I seen a comment. I got to say this. I seen a comment on Facebook. It said, don't look at your little sister. Amen. Who's ready for the word of the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. As he reads these scripture, I, I think, and this is the way I believe that I'm old fashioned in this, but I believe that we need to stand for the reading of the word. I believe it shows uh, reverence and respect for the, the reading of the word. So at this time, for the very first time, I'm so proud Amen. to welcome this young man behind my pulpit. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for both of Turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah 1, verse 13. The word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething fire. It's okay. That was a liar. Amen. Everybody said, That was a liar. That was a liar. I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. And the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come. They shall set every one his throne at the entering gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, and worship the works of their own hand. Now, Israel has a pattern of falling away from God and coming back and repenting and falling away again. Next, if you would, uh, let's get back to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 25, verse 1. And it came to pass in the, in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came. He and all his host against Jerusalem, and pinched against it, and they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. This is what God spoke in Jeremiah coming to pass for their sins. They, Nebuchadnezzar and all of his armies out of the north came and besieged uh, Ju Judah and Jerusalem, and no food supplies could come in and they pretty much starved 
the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, Jeremiah 15, 6. Thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord, thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. Israel fell, fell away from God and came back and fell away from God and came back again. God became weary with their repenting and punished them. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. God sent prophet after prophet and warning after warning to his people, but they did not listen to him, and he punished them. Well, I don't have much, but uh, coming to end. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. All we have to do is call and pray unto God, and he will answer us and Amen. show us. Amen. Right, come on. Uh, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Prayer is a powerful thing, and sometimes it's the only thing we can do, and it can Amen. really change Amen. things. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen, Josh. Jeremiah 1 before he got up here and I stopped right before he picked it up so you know that God was in it Amen. 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 you know I I can take off and go you know some different place with this but I believe that when I when I read that in verse 13 when he said uh, what what seest thou and I said I see a seething pot and the face thereof is towards the north the Lord said unto me out of the north an evil shall break forth upon the inhabitants of the land I wasn't going to go this path. Come on. Come on. But in the last days, in the last days, see, he says in the word that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Uh -huh. Your young men shall have, shall see visions. Your old men shall have dreams. Amen. Your young men, see, there, there's a coming a time, and I had sold, I told my wife today before we even got to service, I said, I think it's a good thing that uh, the kids tonight probably stay in, at least the older kids, because they got to realize that they are the next generation, Amen. that they are a chosen generation, Amen. a royal priesthood, uh, a blood flowing through their veins. And if they don't stand up and say, I don't know this young man here in the purple, but I've seen him lean over during praise and worship and put his hand up over on Joshua's shoulder. And I thought, you know, that is what it's about. See, because a lot of people would say at 14 years old and, and still in school and different things like that, that uh, we're, we're going to make fun of you because on a Wednesday night, you're in a church and you're uh, you're preaching the gospel. But this young man said, I'm here to get your back. I got my hand for all your time. That we got to get together and say that we're going to lift these children up. For, you know, it just said in, in, in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before you was formed in your mother's womb. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that, Brother Jerry. Before you met Stacy, God knew uh -huh. that Joshua would be standing here on a Wednesday night delivering the word. God may see. Revelation uh, 1 8 says uh, that I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the which is, which was, and which is to come. come that means he knows the beginning from the ending. He knows everything that there is to know. They ain't know, oh, I should have seen that coming moment with God. Come on. Uh oh, should have seen that coming. Uh oh, no, God knew it. That's right. That Joshua was going to be standing here tonight. Right. Joshua's name in the Hebrew. Hey. Hey, yeah. everybody knows I love looking for the hidden meanings of different things. Joshua 
is a derivative of Jesus. Amen. I mean, that means he is underneath the royal uh, priesthood yes. of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Meaning that he can see these kind of things before they even take place. Romans 4, 17 says, call those things that be not as though they are. I know when Joshua was a baby that his mama and daddy was calling him to be something before he was even knowing what they were talking about. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can jump in here anytime you want. Just, you know, do one of them hats or something, you know. It's good. Amen. And I believe that this is what the Lord. Is. You know, he's going to reflect on this in years to come. Roy, he's going to look back and he's going to say, Do you remember that Wednesday night? Amen. Do you remember that Wednesday night? Amen. When the Lord, and, and always, you better put this somewhere where you, where you know where it's at. Yes. Because then you're going to go back to that and you're going to look and see. Say, man, this was the first word Amen. that God gave to me. Amen. Tina is our in-house evangelist. <laughs> Pastor Jamie in the back. You know, there's people that, that have got up and ministered in this place. And they have their own story about when. Sister Tina told that she was raised in a church to where uh, women weren't supposed to preach. And she ran from the calling of God. When she came into this, ha this house, she sat in the back. And this pastor kept going back to her saying, I know. Oh, I'm just back here taking care of my grandbaby. Uh -huh. When the anointing is there. When the anointing it is evident. And you can see it. Amen. And with this young man, I'm not, I'm not building him up uh, to, to watch somebody kick the stool out from I'm saying that the God's fingerprints are all over this young man. And God is going to do a great and mighty thing. As long as our heart is for the Lord. Amen. As long as our heart is what God wants us to do, then, then he's going to keep his hands on us. He never leaves us, nor forsakes us. When we got to looking and you get to looking at that footprint uh, poem that everybody talks about. Everybody's got it in their house. He never leaves us. Mm -hmm. All through that times when he's carrying us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Got anything else? You sure? <laughs> you know what I was told one time? Just get up and read the book of um, Ephesians and Colossians and just, just read it. You don't have to preach it, just read it. No, I'm just kidding. He's like, oh Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not helping him. I asked him if he wanted my sweat rag earlier. <laughs> We're going to have, uh, I, I told him, because I know how it was the first time.